will come back. So the Gauteng legislature has reportedly signed a deal which absolves corruption accused employees. Now, according to a News24 report, 32 workers went into an agreement with the National Health and Allied Workers Union where they pleaded guilty for negligence uh, while charges of fraud and corruption uh, for claiming travel stipends they were not entitled to were dropped by the legislature. Uh, Democratic Alliance Gauteng leader Solim Simanga joins us now for uh, reaction. Mr. Simanga, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. I actually almost want to go back to when we really started seeing this conversation gain some momentum, that being in September, you raising uh, the issue as the leader of opposition in legislature, demanding the resignations of 32 uh, Gauteng legislature employees Take us back there, what you had seen and why those calls were made. Well, thank you very much, Naledi, and good evening to the um, uh, viewers at home. Well, you'd remember that, uh, you know, beginning of September, in fact, before even September, we have been raising questions about um, the, the allegations of people who have been claiming, um, you know, um, over time and have been claiming SNTs and have been claiming additional uh, benefits uh, for which they were not entitled to. Uh, you know, obviously during COVID time, people were still, um, you know, claiming um, traveling, uh, traveling allowances, even though nobody was traveling. They were uh, claiming uh, um, um, and travel and, and, and subsistence, uh, um, or what we call the SNT, um, you know, which they were not even entitled to. And we've seen, you know, this um, continuing. We've asked for an investigation. First of all, the person who was head of, um, you know, the secretariat in the legislature, was then uh, started uh, being uh, um, treated hostly, um, you know, when they were trying to um, investigate this matter and uh, decided to take this matter outside of the, um, you know, the, the, the ambit of the legislature and got a, a, an independent, um, you, you know, um, investigator to look into the matter. Mm -hmm. And the report, um, you know, is, um, sub subsequently then disappeared. And we have been asking, why has that been the case? Only to find out that there has actually been some political interference, um, especially leading towards the 2024 um, national elections, when how we had actually then called the ANC and said they were going to withhold their support if uh, this matter was going to be pursued any further. And now we see um, this matter now playing itself out where when we now raise it in the public space, and Nicodemusly now this issue um, seems to be resolved. Um, coincidentally, at the same time as we are now raising it, we hear that there's now a settlement. And we find that that is very much fishy. We're not talking, um, you know, a few cents here. We're talking millions that now people need to account for. And not only account for, but we need to make sure that whoever has been authorizing these payments is actually then bought to book. But these millions that you talk about are essentially pockets of a smaller amounts, right? And I'm keen to hear an example of one of those sort of transactions, perhaps one or two examples. Um, I'm reading reports around a 72,000 rand um, in stipends for trips to um, the UK, for instance. So give me some of those sort of payments that you, that you noted that you found problematic. So there will be quite a number of uh, of, of these payments. Um, you know, when you're talking about the seventy-two thousand, that will be that's a separate matter altogether. By the way, it's not part of the thirty-two. So this is a bigger mess. Um, this is part of. You would remember that uh, a week ago, um, not a week ago, three weeks ago, I actually um, called a, a press briefer where we were actually then saying to the um, premier that we need uh, the forensic reports of the hundred and seventy-seven cases that are outstanding. And you would know that uh, this that we start, we're talking to now is part of the 177. Mm. And the second one that you're talking to of, um, you know, the, the UK trip or the US trip um, is actually now a secondary matter which involves, um, you know, members of the provincial legislature who, um, you know, claim money that uh, um, they didn't travel for. But when you come back to the um, to the um, to the employees, the 32 employees that are implicated here, these were people who were ongoingly claiming, um, you know, um, as an example, um, kilometers that they travelled during COVID time when nobody was uh, travelling. They were claiming, um, you know, money for, um, you know, because you get an allowance if you if you if you if you spend a night over, um, you know, outside of your home. Now, let's say. They are coming to give support to members of the legislature who are doing an oversight visit somewhere outside of their home. Yeah. So they would actually then be there to then give the, the support. That's the money that they've been claiming, and it goes into millions, as I said.
Yeah, and it's uh, so let's now a few a few moving parts here. But uh, just on the 177 uh, forensic reports that you're talking about, the latest, of course, being that denial by uh, the premier um, for your request for that 177. Are you surprised that there was a denial? Well, we're not surprised because we know that they were going to deny giving us that because that is exactly pointing out to corruption that is there. The reports are, are, are very much specific in terms of who should be criminally charged. It's very uh, specific about the companies that should be um, you know, investigated and actually then criminal charges laid against them and the kind of recovery that should be taking place. And we have seen this um, you know, being hidden time and time again. They initially, you would remember, now, lady, that they said that they didn't have anything to hide and all these things have been made public. I asked you, members of the public, to tell me if you've ever seen any of these reports. Nobody has seen them. I haven't seen them. Now they're saying to us that they cannot give us these reports because it contains information that the Poppy Act is, is, is um, you know, um, you know um, uh, dictating to them mm. that they shouldn't be making public. And we are saying that, you know, this is very much strange because a couple of weeks ago you said that this is information that is publicly known, you have made it available. Now you're coming back and saying that uh, you're not going to make that available. And and this is something that we are not going to leave, uh, you know, that easily. We are actually then going to be taking this matter on. We are um, engaging with lawyers, more than engaging with lawyers um, on this particular matter. We are also now writing an appeal, um, you know, which we know that they're going to deny again on the appeal. We are going to take this to the um, to the information um, ombuds or the information regulator who will then uh, look into this matter. And we are still going to then, um, you know, even approach the courts if needs be, because we have shown the documents to our lawyers. Our lawyers are, um, you know, ready to, 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 to approach the court to make sure that we are able to then hold people to account. Yeah, I just want to get in, uh, you know, you, I don't know if you're at liberty to share with us, really, if we go back to the 32 employees accused <laughs> of defrauding, uh, having signed a deal um, at this point. Uh, I, I'm keen to hear just just if they if they if they're you know positioned along along um, political party lines, or you had liberty to give us names, we'd obviously need to get a right of reply uh, from these individuals and hear their side of the story. But I'm keen to hear those details. And then, what does this say to the public around accountability when there is a view that there may have been wasteful and uh, fruitless expenditure, but deals are then possibly signed? Um, to sweep that matter under the carpet? Well, that is very much worrying, my lady, because we are now in possession of a high court affidavit where the secretary, um, you know, uh, does unpack the fact that he was called into a political meeting where the chief whip and the premier and uh, the deputy chief whip and uh, other political, uh, pr uh, other political uh, uh, principals were in a meeting where he was told that he needs to make sure that this matter, um, you know, um, gets to be dropped. And he states in that same uh, very affidavit that he was told that uh, the ANC um, had been threatened by Nahau to withdraw its support if this report, um, if this uh, report continues or this investigation continues. Mm. And when he refused and when he said that this was very much illegal, he was then actually then, uh, um, you know, pushed out. And then this is now why uh, Peter Skosani has actually then been uh, made to, um, to, to, to resign, um, you know, or to, to retire even before the time that he wanted to retire. This is all contained in a, in a high court, um, you know, affidavit. David, that is uh, that we are now in possession of, and that tells you about uh, you know the kind of um, you know corruption and mismanagement that is taking place in this government, and how they are willing to um, you know put the party before um, you know the residents of or the people of of, of Kaute in this particular instance, where wrongdoing is actually then being covered up, and now when we are starting to expose it, they now move on to another phase of signing off deals without even um, you know holding people to account, because all they're saying is that we see this as a, a mistake. Yeah. How can you be claiming month in, month out and call it a mistake and not be held accountable? Yet we are asking who authorized these, these payments? Why was this uh, money paid man, month in and month out? And not now uh, are we going to even have a single individual even being held accountable for this. And this is not acceptable. And if you're talking about cleaning up government, this is one of those things that needs to be really looked at and looked at seriously. It's hard for me to have this conversation around accountability, uh, Mr. Msimanga, and, and simply ignore the politics of it, right? Um, had the Democratic Alliance been part of the government of provincial unity, would you have flagged these issues? Oh, yes.
We would have. Um, if you, you can go back into one of the reasons why we had said to the ANC when we were still negotiating is that all the things that have been um, 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 investigated, none of them will uh, be swept under the carpet because we wanted to come into the government of provincial unity, um, you know, to have reforms taking place and to have a clean government. And you cannot then have reforms and clean government while you are willing to over um, overlook certain things. And this is, I, I, I'm suspecting this is one of the reasons why they wanted to keep us out because then it was going to be very easy for us to get access into these documents because we would have been sitting in the cabinet. And right now, um, we are not getting those. We have to now uh, rely on whistleblowers. We have to rely on applications of the PIA, um, you know, on, on, on mm. of, of the PIA um, Act applications. We have to rely on, uh, um, you know, pushing, and it's taking time for us to get uh, through to those documents. But eventually, we will get to the bottom of what is happening. As I said, it's not just the 32 employees that we're looking at. It's 177 cases that, uh, you know, runs into billions. Yeah. I mean, you can um, remember, um, we, we're still looking for information around the uh, the Anglo Ashanti um, you know hospital where we spent half uh, um, half a billion rand and uh, not a single person has even used that hospital since we're looking at the um, you know the sanitizing of empty schools uh, um, where 427 million rand was used to sanitize empty school and there are so many we're talking social development where uh, monies were spent on uh, on 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 on, fully, on 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 the what we call the feeding scheme, but you know nothing has happened over it. School uniforms where um, you know um, money just disappeared, and children are still sitting without uniforms. And I can go on and on about what is happening. And we suspect that this is the reason why um, you know there was a reluctance to have us part of being part of uh, um, the, the government of provincial uh, unity because these are things that we would have been uh, uncovering and we would be getting this information firsthand. But unfortunately, they wanted to keep us out and. Now, this is uh, why it's taking a little bit longer, um, you know, to, to, to be able to get to this document. Okay. Soli Msimanga, we really do appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Soli Msimanga there is the holding leader for uh, the Democratic 